Well, it seems like our kids are getting a little handy. Not handsy, handy. I'm Scott out with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green. This episode of Right Angles brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. And gentlemen, I was intrigued by a story I found under the headline, How Gen Z is Becoming the Tool Belt Generation. And I think you will be delighted to hear this. Uh, the number of students enrolled in vocational-focused community colleges rose 16% last year to its highest level since they began tracking the data in 2018. Students studying construction trades rose 23% during that time, while those in programs covering HVAC and vehicle maintenance and repair increased by 7%. And they have a quote here from a young man, 20-year-old Tanner Burgess, who said, it's a really smart route for kids who want to find something and aren't gung-ho about going to college. Uh, Stephen Green, Tanner says that he thought, he'd, he figured he was originally going to go to college, but he, it began to seem less appealing during the pandemic. And when he was watching his parents, who were at home and both tech workers, staring at their computers all day, and he realized that he didn't like the idea of spending his life seated before a screen. So he looks and says, hey, I got a secure job track, the prospect of steadily growing earnings. Five years from now, he anticipates he's going to be making, based on experience of others, he's going to be making six figures instead of what he sees uh, people making around him, which is nowhere near six figures. Uh, Stephen Green, uh, this seems to me to be both exciting and shocking news. Uh, I know we're geezers and and uh, and three two of us at least are boomers. And the tendency is uh, for people our age to kind of look down at this good for nothing, do nothing generation who doesn't know how to fix anything or work with their hands. It looks like more and more of them are doing just that. The average age in all of the trades is coming down as more and more young people get into them. Uh, not surprising. By the way, uh, full disclosure, I, I am a Gen Z dad. Well, I mean, I, I'm not Gen Z. I'm 54, yeah. almost 55 years old. But I am the very proud dad of two Gen Z boys, ages uh, 18 and almost 14. Um, the 18-year-old finished high school early, uh, not because he's a, a scholar. He isn't. He's a really bright kid who hates school. So he basically did the... the he did everything he could to graduate a semester early while also doing the bare minimum of work. Uh, <laughs> so he got what he wanted and we'll, we'll see what he wants to do next. But uh, he is very much of that mind. He, he, he wants to, to, to do stuff. Um, my younger son, 14 is uh, very much his own person. He's very interested in school and he wants to be a lawyer. And let me tell you, He's going to be a trial attorney based on the way he argues with his mother and father. <laughs> and he's going to be a very successful trial attorney based on the way he argues with his mother and father. <laughs> I said with uh, uh, mock exasperation that sometimes isn't so mock. Um, but let, let me tell you uh, just a, a couple of personal stories here that uh, lend some credence to this news you've related, Scott, which I find very heartening for some of the reasons you listed. We uh, we read at our, our kitchen about three years ago, and the, uh, the the cabinet guy, we weren't replacing the cabinets. We were doing what's called refacing the cabinets because mm. we didn't want to replace them all, but we wanted new, more modern doors and, and hardware and all that good stuff. Um, the refacing guy, um, very nice guy, very, very chatty guy. Um, and this is, uh, this is a technical and precise work this this cabinet refacing so he he was with us uh on a daily basis for several weeks it must have been at least three weeks um he talked about taking his uh, his wife not someday in the future but a couple of years ago previously on this trip to tahiti that by my back of the envelope little mental calculations had to be a bare minimum twenty thousand dollar vacation for the two of them and this is a, a a young man doing doing cabinet work and i'm like i am in the wrong line of business here he's he's away from his desk he's he's having fun conversations with strangers he's doing something he obviously enjoys and he's spending 20k on uh, on tahiti vacations where i i've i've never been um and this is this is the thing, isn't it? Um, AI is not going to put these guys out of work. No. If if you can do well stuff, 
uh, chances are you are not <clears throat> going to be automated out of existence. And we are seeing that more and more. But the, the flip side of the story, the negative side, is one of the underlying reasons of this positive development is something very negative that's going on in our universities, where men have been in the minority for a while now, and their 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 share of college graduates and just college attendees is, is still, still shrinking. And more and more universities are becoming hostile to, uh, to men. And it's, it's through, uh, it's through DE, <clears throat> excuse me, DEI, which I really should call DIE, and uh, all the rest <laughs> of the, the, the wokeness and the attacks on masculinity and, and all the other toxic stew that's, that's currently in our, on the left side of our culture. And I don't think it's any more potent or toxic than it is on, on campuses. And so... Boys are not stupid creatures, despite what you might have been told. And they look at the situation, they go, well, what else can I do that will bring me some success that doesn't involve spending $100,000 or more uh, on this university and on these student loans and spending time with these, these people who hate me and, and, and resent me? And so that's, that's what we're seeing here. It's a very positive development. And Scott, I've never had this, this disdain for, for Gen Z that I think is so common among us uh, uh, Gen X types like me and and uh, aged boomers like yourself. I kid, I kid. Um, but what I do worry about much more than than the boys are the young women who have been uh, subject to uh, probably an even worse form of toxicity than the boys have been exposed to, but they don't realize it because it's been taught to them as virtue. Hmm. Oh, Bill Whittle, it's interesting because they uh, roughly half of college graduates, college graduates, end up in jobs where bachelor's degrees aren't needed. And uh, and many high school graduates are saying they're just not inclined to take on that kind of debt on what it must appear to them to be a gamble. I love uh, this quote from Tanner Burgess, the 20 year old who's uh, who's going into this vocational training and uh, and looking forward to a career in that. He says it feels good at the end of the day. I'm physically doing something and there's a sense of completion um, his mother was interviewed. Her name is uh, Lisa. She says, I'll be honest, it took me a little bit mentally to get on board. Uh, Lisa Burgess, or Lisa, I'm sorry, Lisa Hopkins, who studied drama and art history before obtaining an MBA. She, <laughs> she never had much exposure to trades, but she says she's thrilled that her son has found something he loves with good prospects. And this is quoting the mother. Uh, he's already thinking, I want to buy my first house by the time I'm 24. I don't have any debt, and I'm off to the races. Uh, Bill, the, the article notes that there are federal and state initiatives that have encouraged training more students, and that, that's helped to spur some interest. And also the work of Mike Rowe, the host of the Discovery Channel series Dirty Jobs, has put a spotlight on blue-collar work. To me, Bill, and, and maybe you disagree, it, it, I think these are smart kids who are making a risk-reward oh, yeah. calculation, yeah. Uh, not only oh, on yeah. the investment in, in potential college education, it's a lot cheaper to get a vocational education a lot faster, and starting wages in new construction hires rose 5%, uh, the, the pay that they're getting, to $48,000 almost uh, $48,090 last year, in contrast to new hires in professional services like accounting or data, uh, $39,000. So you can actually start off making making more money than you would in a, with a college degree. It's funny because I think there was a time when you looked at kids like who went to tech school and you were like, okay, well, these are the kids that couldn't cut it in the academic program. But I think they're smarter than I was. Well, there's no question that in today's environment, the future blue-collar workers are far more intelligent than, than the future white-collar workers. Are far more intelligent people. There's no question about it. Um, for, for the, many of the examples that you've given, um, one of the things that goes unsaid with this is, first of all, I can't tell you the number of videos I've seen where people uh, just graduated college, they're 24, I have, a, I have a bachelor's degree in sociology and a master's in psychology, and I'm working as a priest and I can't find any work, because yeah. nobody really needs that, to be honest with you. Um, but, the, but the big unspoken thing here is, is, the, is the debt. <clears throat> is the college debt. Uh, w one advantage that this, this young man that you mentioned has 
is that when, when he's finished his trade school, he will be able to apply for a small business loan and not have the application begin with already $240,000 in the hole. One of the, one of the great unspoken things about the student debt issue <clears throat> is not just that the students owe the money when they graduate, it makes them ineligible for small business loans so they can start their own business once they get out of college. Hmm. So what's really happened, and Steve talked about the toxicity, and, the, and college used to be a place where you go to open your mind. Now college is a place to go where you make sure that, that nobody opens your mind. It is, it, is, it is finished. College and universities, as we understood it, are, are dinosaurs. There's no saving them. They're, they're fundamentally corrupt, which is a shame. Yeah. The, the advantage of going to college when, when we were of college age was not so much that you got your certification so that you could get a job. Certification is important if you're going to be a doctor, an engineer, something like that, a nurse. But for this fellow's mother who got a, a, a master's of fine arts in theater to be a little um, having a hard time swallowing the idea, you know, I mean, a master of fine arts in theater is not exactly a guaranteed course to financial wealth. I can assure <laughs> you of this. If there was ever a degree that didn't mean anything, that's it. No one has ever hired an actor ever based on the fact that, well, you, you really, your audition was terrible, but you went to a much better school. <laughs> um, so, so part of it is the, is the, is the internet and the information age and a gig economy and, and no longer rising through the corporate ladder. Most people who were employed during the industrial era, including like in the end of the 20th century, if you're going to work in a business, you've got to have a college degree. And, and so, but, but those days are gone now. I'm, I'm a college dropout, you know, I'm, I'm proud of it. I, I got what I needed out of college, got a fine education and, and, um, and it didn't hurt me none. Uh, so all of this is, is, is just the new reality of, of the marketplace. We have, we have turned college into a requirement that only, that, that you cannot be a smart person if you don't go to college. That's what, that's what had happened to this country up until maybe five, six, seven years ago. And after generating two or three generations worth of idiots with degrees in nothing and having them be quarter million dollars in debt for the, uh, for the, for the uh, process, we've come to realize that people like this young man are in fact not only harder working, they are by any measure of the word intelligent, more intelligent than the people who continue to trace this, this, this treadmill of, of, of uselessness and despair and, and envy and um, bitterness that a college education has become these days. You know, it, it occurred to me as I was reading this, uh, you know, you hear all the benefits. Okay, the, you can make more money now starting out uh, if you're trained in the trades. Um, th there's less risk in the sense that you're not taking on this massive college debt. It's much more reasonable to get a vocational training as far as the cost of that goes. If you want to become a welder, for example, you may be able to get that um, basic certification in nine months or a year um, rather than wasting four years of your life and, and tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, um, and and all of that is great. And and there's the other aspect that today a lot of what we used to consider to be just work with your hands and your back trades actually involve much higher technology. Uh, there's a, a highlight. There was a woman highlighted in the story that I read that uh, thought she was going to go in and she'd be hanging drywall at her first job, but actually it turns out uh, she is uh, directing robots who are hanging drywall. <laughs> so. There, there's all kinds of technology involved in these in jobs that used to be considered to be just kind of grimy, dirty jobs, which are actually pretty high tech now. And uh, but but all of that aside, what really made me happy for these young people like Tanner Burgess uh, going into these careers is the fact that they have the satisfaction of knowing that they are useful. Uh, that quote where he said, you know, he was talking about watching his parents staring at a screen all day, but he can get home at the end of the day and feel like he's accomplished something. He built something. He made something. He made, he improved something for someone. Um, the, the shortage I think we have in our country at this time is for people who can actually do and not just talk. And, you know, I am talking about this right now because <laughs> I can't actually do very much. But in those little niches of life where I do know how to do something, 
That's the most rewarding thing. It's fun to talk about stuff, but when you can do something, when you, you know, when you replace the shock absorbers on your car, for example, or, or anything that you actually have to use your mind and your hands and coordinate those in the accomplishment of some goal, you walk away from that feeling like a man. And that, I think, is what so many in this uprising generation yearn for. They want to feel like an accomplished person. And this offers them an outlet to do that in a way that sitting around listening to a lecturer yak can never do. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible.